today for Bung Chang, you are going to need five spices, honey, hoisin sauce, oyster sauce, sesame seed oil, fish sauce, black pepper, ground pork, garlic, egg, green onions, and some lemongrass. Pop quiz. What dish did President Obama eat when he visited Hanoi with Tony Bourdain? I don't know. Answer, bún chả. So today, we're gonna make the famous dish that President Obama ate. And now, the restaurant that he went to, it has now closed off that area and cased it behind glass to commemorate his visit to that restaurant. So, check it out. He's in the Asian spirit right now. Right, so, what we have, some, Living grass, I'm gonna cut into small segment. I'm gonna put it in a food processor to break that down for me. Two cloves of garlic that I peel, gonna go in there. One to two stalks of green onion that I'm also gonna cut and place in there as well. Because my food processor is too big and there's not enough uh, stuff in there, so it's not chopping down as fine as I want it to be. So I'm gonna put it into a blender. And that way I can also then add my liquid to then help break down my, the, the lemongrass, and the garlic finer for me. I want it like minced, mash. That way it blends smoothly with the, the meat. But I'm gonna use my food processor later, later to mix the, the pork and stuff. About a table, spoon and a half of the sesame seed oil, a tablespoon, a uh, fish sauce. Two tablespoons of hoisin sauce. Okay, it's done. Tablespoon of oyster sauce. Two tablespoons of honey. Half a tablespoon of five spice, Chinese five spice. And a couple grinds of the black pepper. mixture is pulverized and liquefied, right? I'm gonna add about a pound of ground pork to the food processor, one egg, the mixture into it, and then to that, I'm gonna add about a third of a cup of breadcrumbs to help kind of bind them all together. They're gonna to pop it into the refrigerator for several hours so that way the muscles, the meat, get a chance to kind of come back to its form. About a third of a cup of breadcrumbs in here. I have just a little bit left so I'm just gonna dump it all in there. the mixtures are blended together. I'm gonna to put a plastic wrap around it, put it in the refrigerator for several hours to let the muscle, to let the meat kind of come back and take its shape and they're gonna hold it together when I shape it into meatballs. Okay, 
So the way they eat bung jia is actually in like a bowl of, of dipping sauce. So today we're gonna make it um, the Hanoi style. So here I have two cups of water that I'm gonna pour into a pan. I have one cup of sugar to counter all that sweetness. I'm gonna have one cup of fish sauce. To counter all of the salt and sugar, I'm gonna start out with one third of a cup of rice vinegar. And if you look at the water, right, the mixture, it looks really dark. So I'm gonna, I'm gonna thin it out with some more water. So I'm gonna add another cup of water to it. So I have another cup of water I'm going to add to this. I want to lighten it up. Okay, I'm going to bring this to a boil so that the sugar can dissolve. Then I'm going to taste it to see if it needs more sugar or some more vinegar. So after the sugar dissolves, I tasted it and it needed a lot more sugar. So I end up going with two cups of sugar to one cup of this sauce to compensate and three cups of water to dilute it the mixture and then I up the vinegar from one third of a cup to one and a half cup of vinegar so it kind of brightens it up a bit more now for some people right, it's a matter of different taste so you can try you can mess around with a little bit of more more sugar or more uh, vinegar or lemon juice or lime juice if you need to now that the meat has rested in the refrigerator for about four hours, what I did was I spliced up some lemongrass stalks and I'm going to wrap it. I'm going to put it in the center of the meat patty. I'm going to take about two, three ounces or so, about two ounces. So then that way, when I grill it, the lemongrass is also going to be, in, the stalk is going to infuse it into the, the meat even further. And then on this end, I have some sesame seeds here that have been roasted. Uh, I'm going to coat on both sides. I'm going to do some with sesame seeds and some without, just for like some different texture and different flavor. Now, if you don't have lemongrass, you can also try this with sugarcane stalks as well, which adds like another sweetness as, as it's cooked and it's also steamed the meat on the inside too, making the patty, the, the meatballs, very, very moist, right? In addition to that, if you want to turn the, instead of meatballs, you can also shape it into round, flat patties, right, of about a quarter of a pound or, you know, even thinner than that so that you could have, you know, like a Vietnamese style uh, pork patty for like a hamburger or you can do like a bun mi style hamburger, right, and it, and it would be wonderful to try. Right, like a nice patty that's gonna be great as a burger option as well while I'm forming the meat I also have a, a hot pot of uh, dry noodles that I already started uh, what I did was I salted the water and then I'm gonna let the um, noodles boil for about five six minutes and I'm gonna check on the doneness of it 
uh, and then I'm gonna rinse it up with cold water in the end to kind of stop the cooking process. So after about six minutes of cooking in boiling water, I taste the noodles and it's still a little bit springy, but it's cooked through. I don't want to be too mushy. So I took it out, drain it, and uh, put cold water on it to kind of stop the cooking process. And now I'm just putting it back into the pan to kind of let it drain the water. And I'll use that later. Now that I have the grill up to 400 degrees, I'm gonna oil the grate first, but I'm also gonna be cooking a lot of it, a lot of my meat on the aluminum foil to protect it. And then I'm gonna sear it later with the oil mark, with the grill mark to get the nice contrast of texture as well as some color in there as well. So I'm making sure that the grill is nice and hot, oiling it, but I'm gonna cook it on aluminum foil first and I'm gonna finish it off later as on the grill for some nice marking. Right, so I have non-stick in aluminum foil here. I'm gonna put the whole thing onto the grill. The patty, it's gonna to move to this side. And the pork chop goes on. I'm cooking it at medium heat at 400 degrees. And for the pork chop, cook it for about four minutes per side. And I'm gonna base some of the marinade right on top of the pork to get the nice flavor going. So the oven is at 400 degrees. You can see it's cooking, it's searing, all the magical sound. The sausage, I'm gonna cook about three minutes per side. And I'm gonna take it off and put some nice grill mark on the other side. The pork, I'm gonna cook for about five minutes per side to render the fat. And then I'm gonna put some nice grill marks later too. So after checking on the on the meatballs, all right? Even though it looks kind of charred, right? The, the fire was getting a little hot, so I opened up the grill to kind of let some of that heat escape. Um, and I flipped it to the other side. So then that way, it cooked at a little bit lower of a temperature, but this is not like done. The charness, right? The, the crust, the caramelization come from the sugar, the honey, um, that's also that has caramelized because of the high heat. Now the pork, it looks like it's about ready to be turned over. So I'm just going to flip that over as well. Here, you see the nice caramelization because of the sugar that we marinate with the fish sauce. At this rate, we're not going to be needing to put it on the, on the directly on the grill itself. Uh, we can just cook it this way. Look at that, how beautiful that is. Keep bring it up to temperature. That way the inside still is nice to cook, but also a little bit juicy as well. To serve the bung jack, you're gonna be pairing that with some nice, fresh, crunchy vegetables. We're gonna quickly pickle the green papayas with the uh, chopped carrots there. Uh, first, I'm gonna clean up the seeds on the inside. I'm gonna throw it in a quick little rice vinegar to kind of pick, give it a quick pickle before I serve it with the with the sauce, with the noodles and the herbs and vegetable, it's gonna be fantastic. Using a teaspoon, I'm just simply scooping the seeds on the inside of the papaya to clean it all out. The seeds are bitter, so you don't wanna have that, even though it's edible. Now 
for a quick pickle. Some rice vinegar, some rice vinegar. About 50-50. Half vinegar, half water. Just kind of let it sit in there. Get all of the vinegar flavor. And then we're gonna serve it with the sauce in a little bit. It's gonna sit in there for about 20 minutes. For the bung cha, you're gonna need a lot of fresh green herbs and vegetables. So I have some green leaf lettuce, some iceberg lettuce down here. Uh, my wife and kids are not really a big fan of iceberg lettuce, so I had to kind of use it moderately. Um, then I have some basil. If you can get Thai basil, that would be even better. Some cilantro uh, and some mints here that I'm gonna chop up all together after I pick out the leaves from the uh, mints here. Along with the lettuce and mint, I also chopped up half of a cucumber, put it in there for some extra crunch, and some jalapeno on the side in case you want to up your, your spice level. To serve it, you're going to ladle a lot, and I mean a lot of dipping sauce into a big, nice bowl. Your meatballs going to be floating into in the water there, soaking up even more flavor. The carrots and the green papaya that you had pickle, you're gonna throw that in there as well. You can chop up some some garlic to put that in there as well, and some noodles, the vegetables that we talked about that we cut up, and it's all what you do is then you dip it into the sauce and just eat it, just like a cold salad. It's fantastic. Enjoy.